I like beer cause it is good. I drink beer because I should. If there was a song to sing, I sing it in beer you drink. It is my firm belief that any alien culture unfortunate enough to discover our own will quickly come to the conclusion that the human race shares a communal goal, namely the utter destruction of our livers over a long period of time. I say this because from the earliest recordable days, beer has held a special place in the hearts and stomachs of men, sitting comfortably above video games and coming in second only to a lifetime subscription to adult entertainment. In the beginning of the 21st century, no member of Western culture can go more than four steps in any direction without tripping over a billboard, poster, bumper sticker, or neon sign advertising some brew or another, while every Super Bowl ushers in a slew of commercials more popular than a chorus of Go Daddy Girls, although that may be due to the fact that nobody can tell what their company actually sells over the deafening jiggling of their bosoms. Anyway, the wonderful beverage of beer can trace its origins back to Iran circa the 6th century BCE, specifically to the side of Godin Tepe in the Zagros Mountains. It is unknown exactly who it was that created the first recipe, although it's rather ironic to point out that women were the main brewers of the time. Regardless, the idea of an alcoholic drink spread like wildfire, becoming more popular than a newly released Harry Potter book set during Hermione's by Curious Phase, spreading as far east as China as well as going southwest to Egypt. It not only became the beverage of choice for pharaoh and commoner alike, but was also prescribed as a medicine by their healers, albeit with mixed results. Ironically enough, however, beer turned out to be less popular with the two most important ancient cultures in the Western world, Greece and Rome. While both cultures were well aware of the process of fermentation, they preferred wine to beer, considering the latter a barbarian's drink, while the former the ambrosia of the gods. That being said, it was primarily due to Roman influence and conquest that beer spread throughout Europe. This actually proved to be a popular idea with barbarians, and not just for obvious reasons. Grain was far easier to grow than grapes in temperate northern Europe, thereby making it easier for the barbarians to grow and produce their own alcohol rather than import it from the south. The next 2,000 years contain more information than I can safely fit into a 5-minute video, so I'm going to have to pick and choose from advancements I think are relevant. For example, starting in 500 CE, monks began brewing beer as a sustenance for themselves during times of fasting. In addition to brewing, it seems that the monks experimented with their brews from time to time, as a major breakthrough was made by a Carolinian monk in 1822, who had the brilliantly harebrained idea to add hops to the recipe to improve the overall quality. Germany especially loved this idea, going so far as to pass a law mandating the use of hops in 1514 under the Reinheitsgebot, or Beer Purity Law. Man, the Germans do love their purity laws, don't they? Oh! That was dark. Moving on. The onset of the Industrial Revolution, circa 1750 CE, allowed the mass production of beer for the first time, with the invention or wider availability of equipment such as the thermometer and hydrometer allowing for the creation of a more precise brew, while the steam engine allowed for a faster distribution of larger and larger amounts of lager. This coincided with the creation of a new lager in 1759 by Arthur Gannis, guess which brew he's famous for, and the invention of draught beer in 1785 by Joseph Brahma. Further advancements such as refrigeration in 1870 and carbonization in 1900 only served to sweeten the pot. The downside is that no mention of beer can be made during this time frame without discussing the prohibitionist movement. So here we go. Although generally attributed to conservative elements in the early 20th century, the prohibitionist movement in the United States can actually trace its origins as far back as the 1840s, spearheaded by ultra-conservative factions such as the Methodist Church, the Women's Christian Temperance Union, and the Anti-Saloon League. Pressure mounted as states began outlawing the manufacture and consumption of alcohol, starting with Maine in 1851 and Kansas in 1881. The so-called Progressive Era, 1890-1920, presented patrons of alcohol-serving establishments with more and more problems. Religious movements continued to jump on the dry bandwagon, eventually going so far as to declare alcohol to be the root of all evil, thereby defying not only common sense, but their own holy book in support of their crusade. Ironically, though, it was the First World War that spelled the demise of the alcoholic trade in the U.S. America's declaration of war against Germany derailed the pro-alcohol movement as German Americans, one of the major forces against prohibition, were discredited and subsequently ignored. On January 16, 1919, 36 of the 48 states effectively made their voters' morals for them by telling them they'd had enough to drink. Over the next two decades, crime rates and alcohol prices both went through the roof as gangsters such as Al Capone made truly staggering sums of money as they brewed, bought, and bullied alcohol for their private speakeasies. Fortunately, voters were more attenuated to the cause of social issues back then, as opposed to now, and pushed back against the prohibitionists. Finally, on December 5, 1933, the 21st Amendment was ratified, thereby making it legal to make and sell alcohol once again in the United States. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sorry about that. Anyway, with the downfall of the prohibitionist movement, beer made a comeback like never before. In 1947, taverns accounted for approximately half of the televisions in the United States, thereby encouraging companies for the first time to invest serious money in TV advertisements geared towards older male audiences. 1950 saw the invention of beer pong at Dartmouth University, and 1971 brought about ad campaigns from the two leading beer brands in the United States, Miller and Budweiser. The industry continued to grow until it reached the status it holds today as a worldwide trillion-dollar industry. In conclusion, beer has survived the test of time to become the single most popular beverage in Western culture, if not the entire world. 
Now, I can only speak for myself, but all that talking has made me thirsty. See you around. Beer is done! Beer is done! Beer is done! That's done! Beer is done! Beer is done! Beer is done! Let's go drink some beer! Beer!